disposable film cameras. These little things are great fun because they're small, lightweight, and I feel like the carefree nature of them means you can just focus on capturing moments with friends rather than thinking about camera settings. And for many people, the excitement of waiting for your film to develop can be the gateway into getting started into film photography. Back in my first year of university, I did a photography project just using disposable cameras. I spent a few months visiting my friends' university campuses up and down the UK, taking these photos as a celebration of how we've all stayed friends, despite living so far from each other, pursuing totally different subjects. I didn't care about taking beautifully sharp images for this project. I just wanted the experience of taking photos to be fun. And through that, I'd create images that meant more to me than an optically perfect one. I even printed these books in the most affordable way possible so all my friends could get a copy. The photos weren't anything amazing from a technical standpoint. I mean, look at this thing. It's a plastic lens with a fixed aperture. This little viewfinder doesn't really give you any advantages when it comes to composing shots. And if you want to know if your shot will be in focus, you can't. It's been many years since I did that project. And since graduating a couple years ago, I've had the pleasure of shooting with all sorts of advanced cameras, both film and digital. So let's do something different. Let's take this little camera out for a spin, see if they can really be used for a professional photo shoot. So here we are at the photo shoot. I'm going to use a few different cameras today, and here's me unwrapping the disposable camera. First shot I took, way too underexposed. Disposable cameras don't have technology built in to let you know if a photo is going to be too dark to take a photo. It will just let you shoot regardless. Chin down a little bit, Greta. Good. And guys here. Turn your head a little bit this way. I was also taking some digital photos on my Fujifilm X-T4. As we can see from this comparison, at a much higher ISO, I'm able to get the shot. I also gave the flash a try. Three, two, one. Nice and well lit, but I'd much rather use natural light. Sweet. Again, really hard to judge if there's enough light in the room. Here's the photo from the X-T4. And Connor, could you gaze over here for me? I also took a lot of photos on my new Zinstax adapter. This lets me shoot Instax photos on my medium format film camera. It's crazy! If, if you want to focus, you turn this wheel here. Gresha and Connor had good fun playing with it as well. I've got a whole YouTube video about it, so check that out. This is one of my favorite photos from the shoot, and I took it on the X-T4. And these two photos are my favorite from the disposable camera. Even though it's quite underexposed, I quite like the shadow and how their hands are arranged. Okay, it's clear to see that these things come up with a few issues. Let's go over them and then I'll tell you what I think the best solution is. Firstly, you're limited to whatever the ISO is of the film preloaded into this camera. ISO is a rating of how sensitive the film is to light. This camera has a 400 ISO film inside it. And I'd say that 400 ISO is a good general speed for people to start with if they're getting into photography. But considering the lighting of this photo shoot I did, I definitely need a film higher, something like 800 or even 1600, to prevent the images being so underexposed. Another big thing is the camera won't warn you if the image is too dark to take a photo. It'll just let you take the photo regardless. For this reason, you'll see in a lot of disposable cameras that it would recommend you just shoot in flash. But flash can have quite a dramatic look that might not always be the look you're going for. For these reasons, disposable cameras, as fun as they are, both because they're simple enough for you to just throw them at any of your mates and they can probably figure out how to take a photo, they're also great fun knowing that you can throw it in your own pocket, take it everywhere with you, opening you up to more photographic opportunities. Let's put it like this. I can get way sharper photos out of a camera like this with a really good lens compared to a disposable camera, but I might not always want to carry this around all day. So what should you use instead of a disposable camera? My solution to this is just use your phone camera. I'm kidding, of course. If you found this video, chances are you're probably way too deep down the film photography rabbit hole for anything like that. My actual solution is to get yourself a cheap point and shoot film camera. Let me give you a couple suggestions. The Canon SureShot is a good place to start. You'll be able to load in different types of films again and again after you've shot them. And it'll also tell you if a scene is too bright or too dark to take a photo. And it's still small enough to carry around with you and simple enough in its design that you could give it to a friend and they could figure out how to take a photo keeping that spontaneous fun you get with a disposable camera. The lens won't be anything special, but anything is better than a disposable camera lens. You can find these cameras secondhand online pretty easily, or take a trip down to your local thrift store or charity shop. They might have a few in there. 
If you'd like something even more affordable, check out the Kodak M35. There's not much I can say about the M35. From a technical standpoint, it's pretty much the exact same thing as a disposable camera. It's got a really basic lens you'd expect. You can turn the flash on or off, and you can reload the film. So you don't have to throw the camera away like a disposable camera. If you love the disposable camera look and you want something affordable, go for it. But if you want a more premium option of a point and shoot film camera, check out my video I made on the Contax T2. In that video, I discuss a few different options if you want to invest in a top of the line point and shoot camera. I had really good fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you have enjoyed it, please press the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.